Hey guys, this is Richard the Fish on Auto Channel. Um, for this episode, I'll be driving up to Coconut Creek, Florida to meet my friends at Jellyfish Art to get to some educational and informational things about all things about jellyfish. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Hi, I'm John Norris with Jellyfish Art, and we're here with Richard at Aficionado Channel. We're going to be talking about moon jellyfish, some myths behind moon jellyfish, how easy it is actually to keep moon jellyfish. So one thing that definitely we want to make clear, uh, a lot of people just think you can get any old tank and put jellyfish in, into any system, which is untrue. Jellyfish need a particular type of flow. Uh, they need a more laminar flow, a gentle flow, almost similar to what you would see in a seahorse tank, but a little bit more um, directed to where they're not blowing all across the tank, bumping it to corners. Uh, that's why we've made the cylinder tank. We have also have a pseudochrysal tank, which is a, a typical jellyfish style tank. And what you would see in an aquarium, um, say like a public aquarium or a private aquarium, a large system, is gonna be more of a chrysal system um, so we try to duplicate that into our designs to um, not only ensure the safety and well-being of the jellyfish but also the longevity so a lot of people think that you could just buy jellyfish and throw them into any old fishbowl and that's just not going to be the case so we try to make that very clear to everyone who who's thinking about making a jellyfish purchase or wanting to get jellyfish that you do need a specialized tank you do need a specialized type of flow so here at Jellyfish Art, we focus uh, mainly on moon jellyfish, uh, the Rila Arita, and they're very easy to maintain jellyfish, and ours is aquacultured, so we don't take anything from the wild. Everything is uh, lab grown, and we do this for two reasons. One, moon jellyfish are, are very hardy to begin with, and two, because they're aquacultured, they're even more hardier. Uh, they don't sting, um, they don't you know, react to, to people with sensitive skins and other types of jellyfish that might sting you, such as you know the flame jellyfish or box jellyfish or even lion's mane jellyfish. So we like to focus on safe, healthy. We don't, we don't want to put any of our customers into the hospital. So one, one misconception about jellyfish is people think they're very fragile and they're very frail. Um, actually, if you pick, you can actually pick them up out of water and they have some heft to them. They actually have um, kind of a cartilage type bone uh, center in the mass of their body. Um, so they're not as fragile and squishy as a lot of people may think they are if they encounter them in the wild or if they're looking at them in, through uh, an aquarium. Uh, they're actually um, pretty hardy. Uh, they can get beat up and torn and they regenerate which is something that's amazing about jellyfish and not a lot of other sea creatures can do is they can regenerate so if there's a you know damage or the salinity goes up or if there's high ammonia and they happen to succumb to some issues that other fish might not return back from jellyfish have the ability to regenerate and that's another reason why we chose the moon jellyfish is because they can have that ability to not only be hardy but to also regenerate so with, with jellyfish, uh, not a lot of difference than keeping a, a reef or a saltwater aquarium. Um, the pH is about 7.9 to 8.2. It's a little bit lower than your traditional reef tank. Uh, we keep the salinity at about 30 ppt, or if you're measuring that in specific gravity, that's about 1.022 to 1.024. Uh, so a little bit less than uh, your reef tank, which is at 1.026, sometimes higher. Um, what's great about these jellyfish, though, in the aquacultured and tank raised one is they can can tolerate swings in salinity. They can adapt to a wide array of variables. Um, what's really interesting about jellyfish in any kind of aquatic environment is we focus mainly on the nitrogen cycle. And that means you have uh, the building block, which is ammonia, which is from waste, leftover food, and detritus. And then that gets converted into, from bacteria into nitrite. And as that nitrogen process keeps going, that nitrite is broken down into nitrate and nitrate is less harmful for jellyfish, and that can be removed through water changes. Um, and that's with any kind of salt water, or even a freshwater environment. What's really important about jellyfish is ammonia is one of their downfalls. Ammonia, um, even over one to one and a half parts per million can be deadly. 
Uh, so we really focus on making sure that our customers are cycling their tanks with the provided bacteria and making sure their ammonia levels are low. Nitrites and nitrates, we really don't worry about too much. Uh, we look at those benchmarks to make sure that um, their, their nitrogen cycle is going through its processes. So the main thing that we look after is ammonia, which is something that we really stress about is not to overfeed, be diligent on the water changes, and make sure that ammonia does not build up over time as it will in these systems. Um, we also try to, to you know, limit feedings and, and kind of stick to two main food groups that jellyfish enjoy to eat. In the wild, they mainly prefer you know, floating plankton and phytoplankton that are in the currents. What we do is we provide a dry food, which is a blend of phytoplankton and zooplankton. And we also have a couple other products that we like to, to feed our jellyfish. Is one, we have what's called instant baby brine shrimp, which is already pre-hatched baby brine shrimp in a saline solution. And we also have an Artemia hatcher that you can take home and hatch out your own live brine shrimp. And we found that live baby brine shrimp, um, freshly hatched with their egg yolks, um, are extremely nutritious for jellyfish. So we've taken a little bit of best of both worlds. So if you're a little bit skeptical or you're a little skittish of hatching out your own brine shrimp, we have some other food alternatives where you don't have to do that, that work or that guesswork and trying to determine how much food you're giving them, but you're still feeding them the, the nutritious part of what their normal diet would be in the wild. We focus mostly on moon jellyfish because one, they're very hardy and two, they're easy to keep. And if there, there also is room for error. So say uh, you added too much salt or you fed too much or if you got a water change, it's okay because these species are very forgiving. Uh, they can go quite a while without eating. They can go quite a while without uh, doing water changes. So um, you don't really need to know a lot about aquarium maintenance to keep jellyfish. And that's something that um, I always talk about to a lot of the folks who call us and ask questions about how hard is it really to keep a jellyfish at home? And it really isn't, you know, you just, we have a lot of videos and a lot of, a lot of great information. And it's just taking that time like you would with any pet uh, to learn about what you're bringing home and what you're going to be taking care of, you know, just as you would a dog, a cat, you're gonna have those responsibilities of making sure that animal uh, remains alive and stays alive and is also there for your enjoyment. And we also get some folks who say, oh, you know, it's, it's cruel to put these animals in such small areas, but what's great about these jellyfish is they adapt to the sizes that they're living in. So they're not gonna always outgrow their tank. Um, they're, they'll get big and I've seen them get really big, but I have never seen a jellyfish outgrow one of these tanks. They mainly stay the size of the environment that they are in. Um, and these guys can last anywhere from 12 months to 18 months. So that's a general, you know, average benchmark of what their lifespan is gonna be uh, in our tanks and and as I mentioned before you know the maintenance uh, it really isn't so in-depth you know we we focus on weekly water changes um, daily to every other day feedings and and really that's about it it's a very basic life support system it's driven by an air pump and you know the maintenance is just making sure that it looks clean and presentable and when you have people come over and check out something that is amazing as having a jellyfish in your house um, I remember going to the Monterey Bay Aquarium uh, when I was a young kid and they had a very, very interesting jellyfish exhibit and how cool it was to be sitting there just mesmerized by the, the way that they moved and the colors and to have something like this at home is something that's very unique and it, it's, it's really special to be able to take um, you know, something as precious as a jellyfish and be able to showcase it off at home. And you know, a lot of folks who are in the aquarium hobby and even those who are, are not are, are finding ways to enjoy jellyfish um, as a, a centerpiece for talking and enjoyment and relaxation in the home and in the business. So we get a lot of questions uh, and emails from a lot of folks who are worried about their jellyfish. And first we tell them, you know, stop, just wait. Uh, less is more is our motto. The less you do, the more things are gonna happen in a good way. You know, instead of jumping to a conclusion and, and, and quickly doing a water change or you think you need a feed, we always tell our, our folks to just kind of wait, look, observe, and see what happens. So sometimes we'll see some jellyfish that have holes in it. 
Sometimes that could be to overfeeding, to even a bubble getting stuck underneath the jellyfish. And so what we tell a lot of folks is the first thing is to uh, check your water quality. Usually whenever we see damages to a jellyfish, it's due to water quality. So we always have folks check ammonia. Ammonia is the biggest thing we want people to check for. If ammonia is high, generally that's gonna be the reason why their jellyfish are not looking the way that they would like it to. So what we do for ammonia is one, cut back the feedings, and two is to increase the bio load. So that's either adding some, uh, some bacteria supplements to kind of help with that ammonia or do a very small water change. Like I said, less is more. So we try not to um, put too much emphasis on doing a lot of water changes because that stresses the jellyfish out even more. So we do, we do as less as possible. So we do minimal feedings, minimal water changes, and as, as at least amount as work as possible because they can regenerate and regrow. So even if they're missing some tentacles or they have a hole or they're looking a little bit um, kind of misshapen, they definitely go back to the regular size. And also it could be contributed to diet. So when these jellyfish are introduced to a better environment, and their food is supplemented with something even more healthier um, than uh, say the dry food for a period of time, they tend to get bigger, they get stronger, the cilia around their bells get more pronounced, their tentacles get longer, and they start to grow. And I've taken some very, very tiny jellyfish um, that were kind of on their way out, they were getting older, and I threw them in a tank and fed them specifically live brine shrimp and they did tremendously well uh, under those conditions and I wasn't really watching for any other parameter other than ammonia, making sure ammonia was low and watching these jellyfish rebound from kind of at the point of death and they came back and lasted another seven months. So it just goes to show that with a little you know, patience and uh, a little bit of, of knowledge of what you're doing and, and taking it slow is the best way to making sure that your jellyfish are healthy and stay healthy. So jellyfish, uh, they don't really reproduce in any of our tanks that we send out to our customers. Uh, you have to have specialized tanks, uh, specialized conditions, uh, simulate what they naturally would be doing in the wild. And that takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. Um, but something that's really interesting about jellyfish is they need to be symmetrical. So if you ever see a jellyfish, even in the wild, sometimes they get bit in half by a sea turtle. Eventually, that jellyfish is going to try its hardest to become symmetrical again and regrow all its body parts. So it has to have an even number of sides, an even number of uh, areas and biradial parts of their biology. And that's something that's built into their DNA. What's really interesting though about um, jellyfish, and especially that I've seen in moon jellyfish, is they will grow extra stomachs. Why they grow extra stomachs, I'm not sure. Is it to compensate for um, damage that they may have sustained in the wild? Or is it a mutation in some of their genes? But every now and then we'll get a jellyfish that has five, even six cloves, uh, we call them clovers, that are part of their stomachs. Um, and it's very interesting because like I mentioned, as though jellyfish have to be symmetrical, sometimes they're asymmetrical, but they're still radial in appearance. But, um, it's, very, it's a very interesting mechanism, sort of uh, the natural selection of the species is to ensure their longevity and to make sure that they re keep repopulating in the wild is to uh, this regeneration process on how they can regrow body parts and keep on living to ensure the survival of the species. So in our tanks, you may not see this, but it's very possible. Um, but generally you're not going to see reproduction in these tanks, but if sometimes we have some customers where uh, the jellyfish gets split in half and then they have, they have two jellyfish, they have a baby one and a, and a bigger one, eventually that one might turn into a jellyfish. Uh, it's hard to say, but if the conditions are right and conditions allow it, they will grow and they will reproduce. So I want to thank uh, Richard and Hernando for coming down to Jellyfish Art and uh, giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, what we do here and a little bit about myth busting on jellyfish and some misconceptions that a lot of people might think they, they are hearing uh, around about keeping jellyfish and, and what we're trying to do here and make it a lot easier and more convenient to have something as cool and mesmerizing as jellyfish at home, in your office, at work, at school, anywhere, Jellyfish Art. Jeez. 
and a little bit about uh, some myth busting on uh, a little bit about myth busting on jellyfish. And then um. How do they? How do they eat? We'll talk about how they, what how, they eat. Yeah, yeah, how do they eat? And then like you know, what do you feed them and stuff like that? And what salinity you have to keep? And then like, um, do they are they? You know, like I know they're they will succumb to high ammonia. Right. But what about nitrite? Nit right. Nitrate. Right. Like any other the parameters that we have to keep? Like, sure. Know, like temperature and stuff like that. So let, I'll work backwards. So I'll start with like parameters and work our way to like feeding and stuff like that. Cool.